the Lamp John Doe, identified as Theodore Teddy Long, and the Youngstown John Doe, identified as Robert Sanders. The cases of Teddy Long and Robert Sanders weave in and out together, which is why I'm going to do something I've not done before and present the two cases at once. So just to be clear, no one thinks the same person took the lives of either young man, even though there's similarities between the two. The truth is that no one thinks the same person did this, but the reason the two are linked is the case of the Youngstown John Doe eventually led to the identification of the Lamp John Doe. One case actually helped solve the other, leading to both men reclaiming their names in February of 2023. In the case of the Youngstown John Doe, he was found by hunters not wearing any clothing in a creek in Mahoning County in 1987. His COD was undetermined. The case of the other man is that of the Lamp John Doe, and he was found in Fayette County in 1981 by a grandfather and his grandson who were out squirrel hunting. The Lamp John Doe was discovered with two GS wounds to his chest and eventually named the Lamp John Doe because he was found near Lamp Road in Fayette County, Ohio. In August of 2022, the Bureau of Criminal Investigation, which is the BCI, would meet with the Ohio County Attorney. They did a 3D rendering of the Youngstown John Doe found in 1987 in hopes that the 3D rendering would jumpstart the cold cases. They believed him to be a black male between the ages of 30 and 44. As with the Lamp John Doe, authorities tried and failed to identify him. While they were able to rule out specific missing persons, neither jurisdiction was able to find the answers they needed. Tips would come into the police once the sketch was released, however, and they found the lead that would lead to identification, only it was not the Youngstown John Doe that was identified. A friend of a man named Teddy Long would approach the police when the images of the Youngstown John Doe were released. They had come to believe that the man could be their friend Teddy. The detectives quickly realized the missing person being discussed wasn't their John Doe, but they were aware of a case in another area of Ohio. They felt this might be a promising lead, and it was. So they passed the lead on, forwarding the information to the BCI, which then found it related to remains dating back to 1981. The tip proved to be the missing piece of information that would lead to the identification of Theodore Long, a 19-year-old man from Toledo. How and why Teddy was around 700 miles away from home is unknown but it was likely far enough that his family and friends might not have heard about the John Doe case. Not much is known about Teddy Long other than he was 19. If his parents reported him missing, the report has been lost. Without a family member saying they were not reported, I honestly no longer believe any claim that they did not. Way too many cases have people saying that they were reported missing and the paperwork has vanished. Additionally, there was a problem back then with many jurisdictions refusing to even take a missing person case, saying an adult has a right to go missing, therefore they don't qualify as a missing person. Thankfully, that's not the case anymore. The refusal to take those reports meant there was nobody to match the cases up with. We do know now, unfortunately, that Teddy's mother passed away without knowing what happened to her son. Her family is hoping that a suspect will soon come to light with tips being called in. That's why it's so important to call if you know anything about Teddy's movements. His sister is speaking to the sheriff about possibly moving his grave closer to where she lives. Theodore Long went unidentified for 41 years. He was found 700 miles away from where he went missing. Robert Earl Sanders, the Youngstown John Doe. They released the 3D rendering of the Youngstown John Doe, and while the tips led to the identification of Teddy Long, it still left the Youngstown John Doe needing to be identified. They would eventually use DNA and genetic genealogy to narrow down the Doe's name through Porchlight Project. This is mainly funded by a program called Nick and the Captain True Crime Garage. They are acknowledged by Othram and their site DNA Solves in helping with the identification of this case. The original assessment had believed the remains to be of an African-American male between 30 and 44. Genealogy would soon discover that Robert Earl Sanders was the young man found. It turns out he was just four years older than Teddy Long, as he was 23, 
when he went missing, and this was in 1976. There is an 11-year gap between his family reporting him missing and when his skeletal remains were found. It is interesting the police didn't match the missing man to the remains because we know for a fact he was reported missing and that that report was still in existence. Anyone with information regarding Robert Sanders is asked to come forward and provide information on his movements. Whatever happened to him is currently undetermined. Robert's friends and family may be able to help fill in the necessary information. Robert Earl Sanders was missing for 46 years. He was an unidentified John Doe for 35. Had he lived, Robert would be 69 years old today. Before I start this video, I just want to say thank you to all of you who have consistently commented on the videos here. It's the engagement that makes a huge difference, and the channel finally has 10,000 subscribers which took about two years and 200 videos to reach, so I want to thank everybody. The Port Angeles Jane Doe, identified as Geraldine Smith. Geraldine Smith and her husband lived in Squim, Washington on January 6, 2018. The couple would go to bed, but for some reason, Geraldine's husband of 50 years would get up and go to sleep on the couch, saying he planned to go to church early the next morning he would say that he did so without checking on Jerry. When he returned home, he would note that her vehicle was gone, and he eventually located it parked near the Elwa River Bridge, which is located west of Port Angeles. Divers would go to the scene and search the river below, as well as along the beaches. In fact, search crews also went out on kayaks, and the Coast Guard flew a helicopter over the waterway, hoping to find her, but there was no sign of Jerry at all. Then in December of 2021, a shoe containing a foot was found near the mouth of the Elwha River in Port Angeles, Washington. It was found and reported to the sheriff's office, who would recover the shoe from the site, and they would try to find more pieces, but nothing was ever found. She was wearing a size 8 women's New Balance brand tennis shoe. The case was a little bit more difficult if you consider how limited the remains were. For obvious reasons, they couldn't list any identifying factors like ethnicity, height, or eye color. The sheriff tried really hard to solve the woman's identity, but DNA was really the only option. Thankfully, the fundraising arm of Authorin Labs, which is DNA Solves, would come into the picture, and they would crowdfund the cost for processing her DNA and doing genetic genealogy. Authorin actually has their own in-house genealogical team that then tends to this. They would find someone who was close in scope, and that person believed the remains could belong to Jerry, who they would report went missing. Other members would provide their own DNA, which would, in turn, provide her name. It's hard to know exactly what happened, but her family would say that Jerry had struggled with depression for years and had considered harming herself before. I've made it my personal goal to share mental health information on this channel, so I just wanted to say that if you find yourself feeling hopeless and struggling with depression or thoughts of taking your own life, you can simply dial 988 and it will route it to the nearest local chapter of an assistance hotline. It's open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. There are over 17 million people in the U.S. with depression, including myself. Jerry was missing for 5 years. She went unidentified for 1. Anyone with any information is asked to call the number on the screen. Jerry was found 16 miles away from where she went missing. She left behind her husband of 50 years and their four children and eight grandchildren. Had she lived, she'd be 73 years old today. As always, thank you so much for watching. The current goal for the channel is 20,000 subscribers. Please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss new episodes. Thank you so much to everybody commenting. Even with just an emoji, it really has made a big difference. Without it, there isn't a channel. So thank you guys so much. Take care of yourselves and each other.